for getting this here. Uh, Marcy Matoso, the director of Hope Station, which was our first BCS clone, has had Dave write two grants for them. It was kind of funny uh, because she'd never written a grant before, never worked with a grant writer. So uh, because of his familiarity with BCS and basically how the program worked and knowing that that Hope Station was a little smaller, uh, a lot smaller, <laughs> but basically th had the same mission, uh, it was easier for him to write knowledgeable grants for, grant for Hope Station. And so they applied for two grants and got them both. So she thinks that's how it works with grant writing. Mm -hmm. You write a grant and someone gives you money. So, but it was a great experience for her. Um, I'm just going to turn it over to Dave. He has about an hour. He's going to make a presentation to you and leave a little bit of time for questions for when he's done. Thank you. Thanks, Suzanne. Um, as as uh, Suzanne mentioned, um, I've been working with the organization for a number of years now, and um, we've uh, had grants awarded from a number of different foundations, a number of uh, different sources. Uh, including uh, grants for a couple of uh, semi-tractor trailer trucks. Um, just recently, a smaller truck. What's that truck called? I think that's Boss Van. Oh, the Sprinter? Yeah, the Sprinter, <laughs> Sprinter truck. I was trying to remember what the kind of truck they yeah. called it. Um, pallet jacks, uh, staffing. Recently, uh, replacing the compressors on all of the uh, freezers and coolers at the warehouse. So. Uh, for a lot of different things. Uh, yeah, for the adult education program. Uh, so there's, they're, they're obviously the uh, grants uh, have increased the capacity of BCS to better serve their target population. But there's a few things I want to really, if there's nothing else you take away from this part of the seminar, it's uh, that you remember these myth busters. There's a lot of false information out there about grants. You can waste an incredible amount of time on pursuing grants uh, that uh, is, is just that exactly that, a waste of time. So the number one myth, um, because it comes up all the time, is that uh, grants are free money. Well... Let's, let's take a look at that. Uh, let's look at time. Do you have loads and loads and loads of free time? If you do, then this question is not relevant to you. But my guess is that you as leaders of your nonprofit organizations, uh, for you, time is precious. You've got lots of different tasks that you have to accomplish. And grant writing should not be a major task for you. Um, so time, people say a lot of times time is money. Um, and in this case, I think it definitely is. So it does take time to put together a grant application. And not even just to put together the application, but to get prepared for putting together an application. We'll be talking about that some more. <clears throat> The other thing that you need to consider when you talk about money and grants is leverage. And what do we mean by leverage? That means that in almost all cases, grant makers are expecting that you're going to come to the table. You're going to be asking them for their partnership in your enterprise. Uh, and you're coming to the table not with your hands empty not with your cap outstretched, saying, give me, and, and as most of you know, uh, one of the mottos for BCS is a hand up, not a hand out. <coughs> this applies perfectly to grants as well. You're not asking for a handout from the foundations. You're saying, we have some things going for us. And we have some resources available, okay? Uh, and, but, and those resources need to be applied in some way towards whatever project you're talking about. So those are, that's a commitment you make of dollars, in kind, uh, volunteer hours, whatever it is. Um, but if you do that, then that gives you some leverage in getting the grant dollars. In some cases, 
uh, not a lot, but particularly with government grants, you actually have to match the amount you're asking for with a dollar commitment. So for instance, if they say a 50-50 match for the grant, if you ask for uh, $10,000, you're saying we're going to contribute $10,000 towards a $20,000 project. Okay, and that you have the money in hand. <laughs> okay, so time, leverage, and let's talk about accountability. Okay, almost all grant makers require reports. They require some kind of a system in place for you to be tracking the outcomes that you're promising through your grant application. So that uh, most of that may, uh, uh, you know, impact uh, time, but it may it may even come to a dollar amount if you've got, uh, for instance, a bookkeeper who you have on contract, and that bookkeeper is going to need to do extra work to report on the results of the grant dollars. Uh, then that's money that you're going to need to invest. Okay, so that's kind of myth number one that uh, is where well, this is going to be a, <laughs> this is kind of like uh, taking a band-aid off. Uh, let's do this. <laughs> let's just do this. But we'll be coming back we'll be coming back to that. <laughs> okay, myth number two. Grants are a major source of revenue for most nonprofits. Uh, so uh, in the newspaper, you hear about uh, such and such nonprofit getting these big grants to do what they want to do, and you may think, "Wow, that's uh, you know, that's if they're getting grants, maybe that's how they're kind of doing all the different activities and funding the different costs that they have." Um, the fact is, is that uh, for most, most nonprofits, and certainly for BCS. Uh, most of the revenue that comes in that's cash revenue, obviously you know, we've been talking about the non-cash revenue, the product donations that come in, that's, that's the biggest source of revenue, but let's look at just cash revenue, and you look at uh, cash re revenue, and most of that is from participant fees being paid. You know, the participants pay, pay a service fee, and that's part of the BCS model. That, that is the major source of cash income for BCS. For other nonprofits, it may be, um, I mean, for most nonprofits, it's a donor base. So individual donations coming in. Okay, and that, uh, that's as a result of their fundraising capacity. Um, the fact is, if you took a pie that represents all of your uh, cash revenue for a nonprofit, in most cases, Typically, a nonprofit's grant portion of that pie is somewhere between 10 and 15 percent. Okay? So, not a major slice, but as we will see later on, it can be a very important one. And just because you've got a snapshot for uh, say, uh, 2012 that looks like this in terms of the revenue that's coming in doesn't necessarily mean that that's all that this grant is contributing to the organization in terms of uh, what it can do for you. So we'll, we'll come back to that. <laughs> okay, myth number three. The more grant applications you submit, the better your chances for getting a grant. That's looking at grant application process like the lottery. And uh, the grant application process is not, not like the lottery. It's nothing like the lottery. Because with the lottery, every, um, uh, every ticket that you buy, every time you, you get one of those uh, uh, chances for uh, uh, the $20 million or whatever, that actually goes into, even though it's $20 million to one, it's at least that. Whereas if you go to a grant maker with a grant that has no chance at all of getting funded because 
It doesn't meet their mission. It doesn't meet their eligibility requirements. It doesn't, you, you don't have your 501c3. That, the chances of you getting that grant, zero. Okay? So that's time completely wasted. So um, this, uh, this uh, what you might call a shotgun approach, uh, is, is not a good, waste, uh, not a good uh, uh, use of your time. And uh, if you want to be more effective and efficient, you need to really know the grant maker. And we're going to get in, into that in a minute. <laughs> OK, so you look at this, and you th you're thinking, well, uh, you know, so what good are grants? Well, let's look at this. Um, although grants are not free money, they, they do represent a source for specific costs that you have identified as being important to the growth of your organization, okay? If you can do a good job of identifying that cost and of identifying uh, and determining how that cost is going to help your organization to grow and to better serve your target population, then um, it's mo money that is wisely invested. Okay, so uh, although it's not, grants aren't free, uh, they can be a very wise investment that will pay dividends later on. Let's go back to this. As I said earlier, although this looks like a s pretty small slice of the pie, grants that are invested now in, cr in certain kinds of expenses can m mean dividends in the future, and it can mean that you're, save you're actually saving the need for more revenue. Let me give you an example. Um, the trucks that uh, we were able to get for BCS through uh, the grants that we got, um, they replaced trucks that were becoming more costly, they were becoming more inefficient, they were essentially becoming non-effective. They represented a, an increasing cost year by year to the organization. The same thing with the compressors that had to be replaced, uh, which sometimes, in a couple of cases, I think, uh, when the compressor, the old compressors failed on uh, these refrigeration units, uh, a lot of the product uh, had to be thrown out because it spoiled. <clears throat> and so those are costs that are borne by the organization because you're not replacing certain kinds of equipment. Okay, so, so the fact that, you know, this, this may look like a small slice of the pie, but in future years, what it means is that uh, that truck, that piece of equipment, that staff person is actually going to save you a lot of need for additional revenue. Okay? More grant applications to submit, the better your chances for getting a grant. The way to approach this is to, again, look at where you're uh, applying to. You know, who is the grant maker? Uh, what do they want? Okay, and we're going to get into that in a minute. Um, I'd like you to turn to your in your handouts to page two of my of the section for me. Uh, that's the checklist. Um, so the question to ask is: Is my organization ready to apply for a grant? Okay, I, I'm so glad that Jeff preceded me because. All of what he was talking about with respect to uh, getting your uh, 501c3 status is extremely relevant. Uh, as he mentioned, it's possible in some cases to get a grant, even if, if you don't have a 501c3, but as he emphasized, it's very difficult. You don't want to go there. Get your 501c3 status first. Have your IRS uh, letter, designation letter in hand and then apply for your grants. Okay, has your board approved the amount to be requested and the proposed use of the grant? Uh, this is uh, an issue that some grant makers actually will ask you about. And uh, in some cases, they even require the board chair's signature on your grant application. So uh, that's an important thing to, to, for you to check off. Uh, does your organization have a credible track record to show that it has been successful in achieving its mission. I, I had uh, someone come to me once, and uh, she had a program 
Uh, she wanted to start in Africa, and she had a lot of uh, donors behind her um, who had already been donating for a couple of years for her to make trips over there. And she says, I want to apply for a grant. And I said, um, well, okay, what, uh, what, is, what does your program do? What is your program doing right now? She said, well, I haven't started it yet. That's why I need a grant. And I said, well, in most cases, a grant maker would like to see that you actually have the capability to do what you're promising to do in your grant application. And that means documenting the success that you've had so far in meeting a certain need. So make sure that you have at least, you know, if it's, even if it's just a year that you've been in existence. And uh, there was an earlier question about um, um, is, is it required to document volunteer hours or, vol or to document in kind. That, don't even ask a question about required. It's a best practice. It's something you need to do. Okay, because that's, those are the kinds of things that grant makers really want to see in your application. Uh, Up-to-date statements that show the current financial situation of your organization and a current organizational budget. Th these, this is um, standard in all grant applications. They're all going to ask for that. So make sure you've got those. Uh, and then do you have the organizational capacity to expend the grant funds? Um, I don't know if, if any of you have applied for grants in the past and, be to and been told, uh, well, we, we as a grant maker have a policy against tipping. And it's not tipping like in, in the sense of giving somebody 10 bucks for services. Uh, tipping in uh, the philanthropic community simply is the, the idea of, a, of an organization asking for grants that exceed by 50 percent, oh, no, exceed, oh, put it another way, if uh, the, the size of the grant or grants is more than 50 percent of the last year's or latest year's revenues, then they're going to say, no, that, that's against our tipping policy. Okay, you understand that? So it means that if you're a small organization, you had uh, revenues last year of $25,000, then it's very unlikely someone is going to fund a grant for $12,000, $13,000. And definitely they're not going to fund a grant for $25,000. Okay? So there's a certain um, uh, st strategy that's involved in uh, looking for small grants to start with if you're a small organization. And then having those uh, gradually help you to grow. And as you grow, then you can ask for, start asking for larger grants. Okay, have you researched the grant makers? Uh, so this is, um, this is a real basic check checklist. And I want you to notice uh, that if you uh, take the first letters of each one of those uh, elements, what do they spell? This is the meat of your grant application. Okay, the meat of your whole decision, really, about whether to apply for a grant. First of all, does your application uh, line up with the mission of the organization you're applying for? Um, Meyer Memorial Trust, for instance, has a pretty broad mission, uh, but there are some things that they don't fund. Um, there are a lot of smaller organizations that have a pretty narrow mission. Uh, Warren Young Trust uh, here in Oregon, uh, they fund organizations that um, uh, particularly uh, have youth services as part of, uh, as a central part of their mission. Okay, so you want to look at, first of all, does their mission really, does it completely preclude you from applying to them? Uh, and secondly, if it looks like it, it may include uh, something to do with the organization, uh, is it a central part of what the organization is, uh, is funding? Eligible costs. Um, uh, there are a lot of examples of inel ineligible costs, and one of them I can give you right away is that no foundation will fund debt. So if you've got a debt that you've accumulated and... Uh, you know, it's 
$50,000. Um, uh, the grant making organizations will not help you to pay for that debt. Okay, um, the amount that they are prepared to give in a grant. Uh, so there are all sizes of foundations out there. Uh, when you talk about uh, Oregon Community Foundation, OCF, Meyer Memorial Trust, Murdoch, those are the big boys, and they give quite large grants. Um, uh, but a lot of uh, the, the majority of foundations are much smaller than that. They have assets you know, under a million dollars. So they're giving grants of maybe uh, $5,000 uh, per grant award per year and they may have only 10 grant awards that they give a year, $5,000 each. Or they may have 50, but they're still $5,000 each. That's something you need to find out. What is the amount that they are prepared to give? And that will determine how much you're gonna ask for, obviously. The time frame for submission of grant, that simply means look at whether they've got a deadline, a grant deadline, and be sure that you get your act together and your materials together and get it in uh, before the deadline. 